Known to this nation as one of the first established all black towns, Mount Bayou, Mississippi, founded in 1887, incorporated in 1898 by former slaves, for decades has been known for its rich culture and African-American history. I'm Danny Lewis, and join us today as we visit Mount Bayou, Mississippi. Well, I need to pull, I need to pull up a chair. For those of you that just joined us today, we're here in the office of Mayor Daryl Johnson in historical Mount Bayou, Mississippi, one of the first celebrated African Americans municipality in this entire country. Mayor Johnson, thank you for having us today and welcome to the Talk of the Town. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, Mayor, take us back to the beginning, the Mount Bayou story. Well, Mount Bayou has a great and a rich history. And I always say that African American history really has not been told until you really tell our story. Because we're so deeply rooted into African American history. There were, there, there were men that stayed on this most very uh, successful plantation called Hurricane and Bride Plantation, who ended up running the plantation because uh, Jefferson Davis' brother, Joe Davis, who owned the plantation and along with Jefferson Davis, um, opted out to go along with this Robert Owen plan that says, you know, this utopian society, let these guys get their education. And that's what they, they, they adopted that. And so they, they allowed those guys to get education. And those guys on that, on that plantation exceeded everybody in education. They studied so strongly. And they ended up being, I say, geniuses. They were agriculture geniuses. They were entrepreneur geniuses. They, 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 uh, they were engineers. So they were able to draw up cities and, and do the type of things that so much so that that was one of the most successful plantations at that time. And it was I.T. Montgomery's daddy who ended up running that plantation. And he was revered to be such a strong, uh, intelligent man that those guys ended up coming to Mount Bayou and later on, those young men, uh, Isaac T. Montgomery and Benjamin Green, and they founded some uh, swamp land and turned it into a town. And here we are in Mount Bayou, Mississippi. So this actual town was founded in what year? 1887 it was founded. It was a swamp full of, infested with bears, mosquitoes, and all type of wild animals. But the train ran through it, and the train sold them this property. And they turned this into a great uh City. So now tell us a little bit about the founding father uh, on well, paper, Mr. Montgomery. Mr. Montgomery actually was, a, again, Montgomery and his cousin, Benjamin T. Green, were noted to be the founders of Mount Bayou. And they actually were very, again, they were very smart. They, were, they, were, they, they, they actually, uh, to get people to come here, they actually interviewed them. And uh, they wanted to bring people that wanted to do something. And so they got these people that wanted to do something after Reconstruction to, to, to come into Mound Bayou, this part of Mississippi, which is a Mississippi Delta, probably one of the most racist areas they could do. But they came here, and this rich alluvial soil, they raised cotton probably better than anybody else in the surrounding areas that white farmers as well would come and try to bring their cotton into Mound Bayou. These were people that I say were geniuses that really wanted to uh, show what African Americans can do. So now, in knowing that this town, or this city, has a history of, uh, of, uh, of uh, producing a lot of, of success of a lot of different well-known African Americans, such as exactly. Mega Evers, exactly. to be one. Mega Evers, we have, we have people that come from Mount Bay. Uh, Booker T. Washington used to, used to, used to come into Mount Bay. He mentored the people, and he ended up uh, having a bank, one of the first banks, African-American banks in the area. And uh, uh, again, like I said, uh, uh, Mega Evers, Dr. T.R.M. Howard, who uh, was Mega Evers' mentor, and Mega Evers worked for Dr. T.R.M. Howard. A lot of people don't know he's one of the unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. He was the one that spoke at Martin Luther King Sr.'s church and uh, Rosa Parks was sitting out there and four days later Rosa Parks said, I'm not getting up on this bus. 
he was the man who inspired these people. He was the one who had the fights with J. Edgar Hoover and told him, you need to come down here to Mississippi and investigate this Emmett Till trial. And because of that, Emmett Till, now the, the, it's, it's, his situation is noted for the starting of the civil rights movement. So uh, Mount Bayou is noted for a whole lot that a lot of people don't uh, know about. Now we have a modern-day congressman who is actually one of the, the only black African-American congressman mm -hmm. in the, from the state of Mississippi, Benny Thompson. He has roots here as well. Well, Benny Thompson uh, uh, married from Mount Bayou. He used to come to, to, to Mount Bayou and court London, London Johnson, who parents own one of the sto local stores here. And uh, he ended up taking London, and that's his Found his sweetie here. Huh? That's exactly <laughs> right. And also, you have a brother that's a well-noted musician because the Mississippi Delta is known obviously for its rich uh, history and, and foundation of the blues. A lot of great blues musicians. But your brother, who is a well-known blues musician, is from this he's area. A, he's a drummer, and uh, he's, he's actually the think tank behind uh, the Delta Music Institute in Delta State. And that's the Delta Institute is the one who's bringing the Grammy Museum into uh, to, to uh, Cleveland, Mississippi. But actually, before the Grammy Museum, before Delta Music Institute, was Joe Eagle and Eagle Academy, which was the think tank. The ones who really started the Delta Music Institute were the ones who got the idea from Joe Eagle, who was mentored by uh, 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 some great people uh, before him. Delta. You have a picture here that I believe has Emmett Till's mother on it. You want to talk a little bit about well, that? Well, after the murder, story. after the murder, which was just a few miles from here, uh, after the murder of Emmett Till, uh, there had to be a safe haven, a safe place where blacks could come dealing with that situation because at that time, blacks had become, become, the, uh, had become fed up with uh, the action that was being taken against blacks uh, by some of the racist people in the area. And Dr. T.R.M. Howard, you know, these people in Mount Bayou were successful at that time. They were celebrating. They were, they were, it was a black sheriff, black mayor, black, black uh, business owners, black everything here. And then you had all these things that was happening against black people all around. So Dr. T.R.M. Howard, who was the medical director at the hospital here in Mount Bayou, also uh, was a very highly charismatic speaker. And he would go around and speak in different places. He was the one that Mamie Teal came and stayed with as he uh, began to uh, spar this investigation uh, of, of what happened to Emmett Teal. Now, Dr. How Dr. Howard is on this particular picture, which... There's Dr. Howard right in the middle with the bow tie on. He's holding on to the arm of, of, uh, of uh, Mamie Teal. And uh, they posed, uh, they, they, they stopped and posed for that picture. There are some other people, and I can't remember all the names of the people that's on that picture. But, um, but Dr. Howard was one of the ones that even throughout the newspaper, if you do a history check, you find out that he sparred openly in the newspaper uh, with uh, 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 J. Edgar Hoover, uh, who, who he, he, he really pushed to come down and do an investigation of what was going on here in Mississippi to black people. Now, after the Emmett Till situation and, and this whole thing with, with, with Mrs. Till coming to this area and Dr. Howard and all, how did that affect Mount Bayou as a town, as far as its existence? Was it, was it, was it uh, uh, how should I say, was it a boost or was it kind of a viewed well, as a negative well, impact? Well, Mount Bayou was the place. It was the place where when you could... It was a place where they would say that you, you could not only run from the share, uh, sheriff, but it was a place where you run for the sheriff. So you would have people that actually, uh, that, that this was the place that you could come and stop. And so blacks would come here and launch off and do other things uh, to, to deal with the civil rights era. Now, Mount Bayou was actually one of the first all... African-American towns established in this country, That's throughout exactly the country, right. along with a place in North Carolina. Well, Princeville, North Carolina, which is, uh, does not have as much as a celebration that we have, uh, did not make the news. Uh, Eatonville, Florida, uh, which uh, celebrates 1887 like we celebrate 1887. But, but we are the most celebrated 
uh, and we're the most documented African American uh, city and and uh, in in the country. And at uh, a lot of the papers from the New York Times all the all the way down to some of the local papers wrote about Mount Bay, and they would say that Mount Bay is the oldest African American city in the country. Now you, so now you guys are still predominantly. African American population, if not all. It, it just basically, you can basically say that we're all black still, uh, maybe a few, but I always say that you know, and it's no secret. Uh, I mean, you can you can study us and find out that there's still racism because you don't find many whites wanting to move into a black neighborhood. What is that to say about how whites thinks about blacks? So. We don't have a lot of people over the years since 1887 that wanted to move into Mount Bayou right. that were not African American. So now you guys still have, you have the very first hospital in the Mississippi Delta formed by an all black staff in uh, 1942, I believe it was. 1942. That hospital was built by the nickels and dimes of people in a secret uh, fraternal order called Knights and Daughters of Tabor across this country. And during that time, a lot of there was a lot of there were a lot of secret fraternal orders because you had to do things in secret. But they opted to build a hospital uh, during that time, and for the first time, blacks can walk into the front door of a hospital in the middle of this racist Mississippi South, and and people were able to be taken care of medically right here in Mount Bayou. Now, as we came through town, I noticed that you guys have a sign that the hospital has been reconstructed. Re, re, remodeled and reopened. That's exactly right. It's, it's, now it's been uh, refurbished, remodeled, uh, what you want to say, and, and now it's a, a, a Taborian Urgent Care Center has been placed into, into the building, and the building is back up and going now. Right. Now you're in your very first term, the third year of your first term as mayor of Mount Bayou, Mississippi. So what are some of the things that you have implemented that's going on now for the city, the growth of this city? And what's in store for the future of Mount Bayou? Well, for the first few years, I started building foundations because I knew Mount Bayou uh, it was very significant in African American history, and our story needed to be told. The African American story needed to be told, and I th I think that Mount Bayou has a very important part in African American history, so that we when we tell our story, the whole African American story really can be told. Our problem is that whites have been telling our story, and we have not. So one of the things that I'm I'm telling everybody. Tell a story and tell the real story so that we all can be proud of who we are. That's one of the things that I'm doing in Mount Bayou. And uh, because of it, we started what we call the Historic Black Towns and Settlement. We've gotten all of the historic black towns that were influenced by Booker T. Washington. We've started an initiative together, and now we're working together to... Now, na na just name a few of those, because I'm familiar okay. with Fed. Grant, uh, Grant, well, actually, these are, these are uh, Fed is not a part of this one. Uh, is We started with, with five across the country. Gramlin, Louisiana, which is the oldest black settlement in uh, Louisiana. Hobson City, Alabama, which is the oldest black... Uh, in, in Alabama, Tuskegee, where Booker T. Washington right. was, uh, Eatonville, Florida, which is the oldest in Florida, and Princeville, uh, um, again, we added Princeville, uh, North Carolina in there, and uh, of course, Mount Bayou. And so we call ourselves the Fabulous Five, but uh, now it's six. But the point is, is what, what we formed is a, is a collaboration and we're setting up a tourist trail around this whole country. We're pulling ourselves up and, and, and saying that these are the places that need to be revered in African American history. So I've done that. I've, I've worked that and we're working very well. Uh, well. Lately we just had a summit with the historic, uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, with the HBCUs and uh, the black colleges and, and, and at Tuskegee just a few weeks ago. And uh, so now we're including the HBCUs in our initiatives as well. But now in Mount Bayou, I'm still uh, pushing that locally. We, 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 we set our city up today as a tourist place. And I have a vision to see African-American uh, museums in this area. Now, you may mention to me before we started the show about President Teddy Roosevelt stopping through here on his own private train uh, 
two two one. Yeah, yeah. Which, and, and, that's what, that's what and, it was. And I talking call it about two, two, one. And in the beginning of the foundation of the city yeah. and speaking very highly. Well, we know uh, uh, President Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, if you look at the history, he had a, he had a slight. Um, one of the things that you you can hear about Theodore Roosevelt is that he started uh, inviting blacks to the White House. He invited Booker T. Washington to the White House. Of course, he wouldn't do it again after all of the flack that he had behind him inviting uh, Booker T. Washington to the White House. But he revealed what was going on in the black community, and he had to stop at Mount Bayou. And so I say he brought 221 to Mount Bayou, but he got on the back of the train, he made his speech, and he looked up and down the city, and he saw these humongous, uh, majestic homes that had these white picket fences around it. And he said in his speech, and these are 100% Negroes. These are actually 100% Negroes, and they built this place. This is the jewel of the Delta. And that's the name that we, we, we coin. What, book, what, what he said, uh, 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 Theodore Roosevelt called us the jewel of the Delta, and we are. We are a jewel in this Mississippi Delta. And he, and, uh, and again, I was saying that Booker T. Washington came here and helped get a bank started here in Mount Bayou. And so we've had some of the greats here in Mount Bayou as well. Now, what's the future, or what do you plan for the future now of this need, great city? Now in Mount Bayou, I think we need to be able to do what the Bible says. When the children of Israel were coming across that, 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 that sea, and God told them, say, you take stones, and you put those stones there when your children ask you about it. You can t t point back to the stone and say, this is what this stone means. Now we have more than stones. We can do museums, and we can, we can tell our story. So now I believe it's time for us to take, start dealing with museums. I'm looking at a black church museum. I'm looking at a museum that will tell the story of us coming from Africa all the way to America. See, a lot of people don't know. You didn't, they didn't they just bring people from out of the woods in Africa. They brought kings and queens. They brought people that were, were, were very and highly uh, intelligent there, but brought them to a strange land and turned them into slaves. But we need, to, we need to respect what came from Africa and tell the real story. Talk about how they put us on that boat, but also talk about how we came and were in, very ingenuous. Uh, these these people that 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 built the the mercantile stores and the ones that built the agriculture on the backs of our folks, this country became great. Cotton was king in the South, and it is what made the Confederacy. When they flag fly that uh, uh, Confederate flag, a lot of folks get upset, but when they fly that Confederate flag, it says to me that it was our folks who actually bankroll the fact that they can even make a flag like that. And so what I'm saying, what makes me proud, is that we were the people that made this country great. Right. And, and it was those people that came into Mount Bayer and made Mount Bayer great at that time as well. Well, Mayor Johnson, we thank you again. We appreciate you for letting us come in. And good luck in the future. With thank the future you so of very much. All right. Keep your eyes on Mount Bayer. Right here. Historical Mount Bayou, Mississippi, the jewel of the Mississippi Delta. You have been on the talk of the town. Actually, this is a, a, a lot of Alpha Phi Alpha uh, would, would, would like to look at this one. This was the home of uh, Fred and Mariah Miller, uh, but uh, it doesn't exist now. But this home was, uh, the, he was the third general president of Alpha Phi Alpha. Many A Phi A's know about him, and he stayed right here in Mount Bayou. Uh, and then the home of, uh, of Mayor Booz uh, and, and his wife, Mary Booz, was a National Republican committee woman. A lot of people don't know that blacks were Republican back in the day. And uh, Mount Bayou also was an education center. And this is a picture of our Bolivar County training uh, school. And uh, people came from all around to go to school here. That's why the large houses were built in Mount Bayou, because people used to stay with other people in Mount Bayou as well. And of course, uh, here's a picture of uh, one of the physicians in Mount Bayou. The first brick church uh, built in Bolivar County was First Baptist Church, uh, actually, and it was first called Green Grove Baptist Church. And before that, it was a brush arbor. It was where people, where, where the people finally uh, came to Mount Bayou, got off the train, and, and built a brush arbor 
where they can say they can worship God freely. And came coming out of that was uh, this uh, First Baptist Church, and, and it, is a, it is a majestic church here now in Mount Bayou, Mississippi. Of course, you know, we celebrate the bank building here at Mount Bayou, which is not far from me, right around the corner there, uh, uh, which was uh, built uh, uh, and uh, it was organized and opened in 1904. And uh, then the, that, that structure there was later on built as well. And it was the headquarters for many other, uh, it was the headquarters for many other, uh, the bank building was the headquarters for many other organizations here at Mount Bayou as well. But this is one of the things that we uh, applaud. Uh, and that is that the Mount Bayer Oil Mill and Manufacturing Company was opened here in Mount Bayer in 1912. And that oil mill was one of the, it was the first undertaking of this size of African Americans anywhere in this country. And here's a picture of all these, I, I, I look at this picture and I, I, I'd love to look at this picture over and over again. It was thousands of African Americans came during the opening of this oil mill. And you see these pictures of these men in these suits and their hats. And uh, for me, that is a powerful, powerful picture in Mississippi. And these men, it was just more than 16,000 people attending when Booker T. Washington in 1912 uh, opened the oil and dedicated that oil mill in November 1912. So, so goes Mount Bay. This is it. This is where we are. This is a great place in African-American history.